This video will explain how the Communist forces managed to survive the persistent persecution of Chiang Kai-shek and the Gormandang during the 1930s. Although the White Terror had virtually annihilated the Communist faction in China in April 1927, the attacks actually had the strange effect of forcing a new direction in the CCP leadership, and thus allowing for the emergence of Mao Zedong in the 1930s. Mao's alternative directive would be to put his faith in the peasants, not the urban proletariat, as the driving force for a revolution. And it all began with the Jiangxi base and the Zhu Mao army in 1928. Mao, a survivor of the April purges due to his relative insignificance in party affairs, responded to the GMD by creating a peasant army with experienced soldier Zhu Dei. Mao was also a former school teacher and had himself little military training. The Jiangxi base was initially successful, resisting GMD assaults and bringing in progressive reforms for its citizens. It expanded to become the key provincial Soviet in China. At this point, it's important to note that a major event had sent global communism in a radically new direction. This was the death of Lenin and subsequent emergence of Stalin as leader in Russia. Stalinist purges stretched as far as China, with party founder Chen Dushui denounced as a Trotskyite. In 1930, the ideological paranoia had spread to Jiangxi. Mao began a series of his own purges against A.B. Tuans, suspected members of the GMD anti-Bolshevik League that had infiltrated his followers. It's estimated that tens of thousands of Chinese were killed or maimed in vicious attacks that penetrated almost all of the communist Soviets in China. Mao used the purges to destroy his enemies and cement his authority over the Jiangxi communists. At the same time as he was purging his political enemies, Mao took a new wife. He separated from his second wife in 1927 and fallen for soldier He Zi Zhen. He Zi Zhen's reputation as a fierce fighter preceded her. Her nickname was the Two-Gunned Girl General. In a sad case of affairs, Mao's second wife, Yang Kai Hui, was arrested by the GMD in 1930 and executed when she refused to denounce her former husband. The success of Jiangxi, coupled with the ratcheting up of anti-communist pressure by the GMD, led the CCP leadership to abandon their city stronghold in Shanghai to join up with Mao. This was spurred on by the capture, by the Gormandang, of a senior Russian agent who betrayed the whereabouts of thousands of communists in major cities in 1932. Zhou Enlai, who had even trained with Generalissimo Chang at the Wampara Academy, took control of the communist forces. Chang sensed an opportunity to eliminate the communists in one place and launched his fifth suppression campaign aiming to wipe out the CCP and their leadership in one fell swoop in 1934. Preemptively, the communists abandoned Jiangxi on the night of October 16th and began what's become immortalised as the Long March, a simple but very apt title. 80,000 communists headed west across the Gan River into Guangdong province. Mao took his new wife with him but he left behind a two-year-old son. He would never see him again. The communist forces were allowed to travel unopposed through Guangdong due to an agreement with the local supposedly Chang loyal warlord, demonstrating just how disunited China was under the Gorning Dang. Chang's troops caught up with the communists at the week-long battle of the Shang River. The communists lost half of their forces in a devastating loss and were forced westwards into Guizhou. There, they crossed the Wu River in January 1935 and captured the city of Sun Yi. The Communists drew breath with the Sun Yi Conference in the same month. Here Mao was appointed as a full member of the Standing Committee of the Politburo and took control of the direction of the march. The forces swung south and north again to cross the Yangtze. The aim being to meet up with Zhang Guo Tao, and the Hunan Soviet's 50,000 fighters. In order to do so, Mao's possession faced some of the most arduous terrain in China. They tracked up and through rugged valleys formed at the end of the Himalayan mountain range towards the Tibetan Plateau, at altitudes greater than anything in Western Europe. The most famous feat of endurance is the much celebrated Dadu River crossing, where the communists supposedly crossed the formidable Dadu River wild and flooded with snow melt in early spring on an ancient chain bridge that had the planks removed to make it unusable. 
Although it's been much lauded in communist propaganda, it's now doubtful as to whether the river crossing ever even took place. A great story nonetheless. The communists eventually crossed the Great Snow Mountains, the edge of the Tibetan Plateau, and with Mao having to be carried several times as he was suffering badly from malaria, met up with Zhang Guotao's forces in Henan. What resulted was a power struggle between the two leaders. Zhang wanted to head west, safely away from the nationalist threat. Mao wanted to head north. After much argument, they parted. October 1935 saw the communists crossing icy marshlands nearly 4,000 metres above sea level to head to the north. Diarrhoea and sickness were unavoidable and food and water were in dangerously short supply. Somehow, the communists crossed the swamp and even went on to defeat the force of GMD troops lying in wait on the other side. They then stormed a nationalist fortress guarding the crucial pass into Gansu province and made it over a year since they'd set out to the Baoan cave village in northern Shanxi. The area was semi-desert. It had poor soil for agriculture and only five to six thousand of the original 80,000 had survived the journey. But the long march was over. The communists had survived and over the next 12 years Baoan would become the foundation for the communist revolution. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us.